Alright, so uh, welcome to the second uh, video beer review at BaltimoreBeerGuy.com. Um, this, uh, this time we're reviewing the Flying Dog Wildeman, uh, previously named Indo Wildeman, which is its own backstory. Um, it's, it's a farmhouse IPA, as they're, they're calling it. Um, yeah, so you, know, you think of farmhouse beers, you think of kind of rustic saison type beers that are all the rage and probably so, I think it's a great style. Um, usually pale in color, but as we've seen from someone like Baltimore's own uh, Stillwater Ales, um, it's, it's kind of a catch-all name right now because you can kind of take it in a lot of different places. As we're seeing here, it's almost, uh, you know, this one happens to be uh, pale in color, uh, looks to be unfiltered or just kind of mildly filtered. Um, and the IPA part comes from the kind of hopping that they they do with this, which we'll get back to in a minute. But um, <clears throat> backstory in this is that um, the Flying Dog Brewery, specifically brewer Matt Brophy, uh, went to um, Europe, I think two years ago, and uh, kind of was doing some R&D and, and, you know, brought some people with him and met with a lot of um, industry people and we kind of checked out the Belgian beer scene and some other places and kind of got that rock star tour thing that, that kind of tends to happen out there for uh, significant American brewers. But um, they, uh, they heard kind of roundabout way that there's a bar in, I think, the Netherlands called Inde Wildeman that uh, was having its 25th anniversary and was a huge backer of Flying Dog beers. So, you know, they checked it out, really enjoyed themselves, and somehow came, came up with the idea to make a beer for the anniversary, um, which is what kind of what got released, I think around this time last year, actually. They, uh, so what they just did is they developed a, you know, kind of Belgian farmhouse-style beer, Belgian yeast, uh, and last year's version, they, if I remember correctly, they dry-hopped it with Citra, which is still very much the rage hop right now. Um, so it was very... To me, kind of very lemony in the nose, and but very zippy, very kind of peppery beer, uh, really enjoyable. Uh, they, it was mostly meant for Europe, but a few cases, you know how that usually works. You know, escape down to a couple places around town. Um, the launch was actually in uh, Church Key in D.C., and I remember <laughs> the night that that happened. I, uh, you know, zoomed down the 29 and kind of took a back way to get down there and enjoy it with the uh, Flying Dog crew and a really good, really good evening with them. Um, really enjoyed that beer and kind of looked forward to kind of a broader release for it, which is kind of where we're at now. They've, um, it sounds like they're, they're trying to strike gold a little bit with this beer, kind of like they did with Raging Bitch, and which has become kind of the flagship beer for them. Um, and so it's uh, interesting because most breweries kind of uh, look for just a house IPA maybe to, to hang their hats around, and I, I kind of encourage that. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's just... Consumers are going to lead you where they lead you, and, uh, you know, it's another, I think it's a fantastic beer. I think they, uh, um, they modified it a little bit this year. They, um, they won't reveal the, the exact combination of hops. They, they call it a proprietary blend of, um, what sounded to me like quite a few hop varieties kind of added to it to kind of give it the, the final character that they're looking for in the hoppage, um, and obviously a proprietary blend of wheat, uh, malts and stuff. Um, but yeah, so, you know, you've got this kind of very interesting, just lovely American farmhouse ale, you know, we've really been able to kind of take after the, uh, the Belgian influence in beer and their creativity and stamp our own signature on it with all our breweries. And you're seeing this all across Maryland, all across the United States and Flying Dogs, definitely not immune from that. The, the Wildeman, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Raging Bitch used a, uh, kind of Belgian beat. A Belgian yeast hybrid strain that they call Diablo that gives it that really interesting character. And I, um, I'm kind of curious what, what they use for this, but uh, in the meantime, it's, it sounds like it's going to be year on beer. Um, statistics they mentioned 7.5% ABV, which is you know right in the range for a beer of this style. It's not actually kind of a little light. Um, I encourage you to also check out they, uh, they made this amazing, <laughs> this amazing video for it. Uh, that you can find on YouTube and the Flying Dog website, uh, just this kind of web video. It's not, obviously not a commercial 
I mean, it's commercial style, but it's uh, just a web video that I can't even begin to describe. I, I fell in love with it. I think it's just an amazing piece of art. And, um, you know, they've got their, their wild man, if you will, in the woods. And there's a uh, video loop with uh, actually one of their uh, friends, Rick Kempen, who's an associate of the brewery out in Europe. Um, kind of, I think he's kind of like a beer distributor kind of guy. Kind of, well, it's a whole other story for another day. But um, he's in the background saying "Tentanda via est," uh, which translates to at least how they. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know Latin, but it's, apparently, it's the way must be tried, and um, you know, it's kind of got philosophical ramifications, I guess. You know, I don't know how however you want to interpret it, but. Uh, they're really kind of building an interesting marketing campaign around it, and I just, you know, adore the video. They, you know, when I've spoken with them, they love it. I, I, I'm glad they do because it's pretty fantastic, and I encourage you to look up on YouTube and find that or at the Flying Nut website. Um, yeah, so kind of got that going on, and take a little taste here. I mean, these videos are becoming more about um, storytelling than beer. I'm not I'm still getting used to trying to explain beer. It's such a personal thing, you know, not really, not personal, but, um, I, can't, I struggle to kind of put, put to words what, what, what's happening when, when I enjoy a beer, or that I tend to enjoy it, but, uh, you know, so when you smell it, it's got that, it's classic farmhouse beer, it's, it's, you know, it's in that kind of Stillwater Saison, or, um, i trying to remember the name of the, uh, the, the, uh, the brewery in Belgium, it's got green bottles, um, anyway, they, that kind of Saison, but, just really, really kind of zesty, earthy, kind of uh, fun little aromatics that you know really don't go away when you're drinking the beer, and they actually become kind of more present. And you, really, you really have to kind of like the style to to enjoy these beers with the kind of the uh, the aromas that they generally shoot off. Um, generally, I prefer pale malt beers, just kind of my thing. You know, not just IPAs necessarily. I love them big hop head, but um, you know it's got that nice pale malt that I look for. I don't really look for too much roastiness and malts and that kind of thing. You're just looking for you know, taste the base barley or wheat or um, oat or wherever they go with, with that, and, you know, even rice sometimes occasionally. Um, but this one, I assume it's all barley or mostly barley. Um, yeah, just real zesty, real zippy. Um, I, I, I can never describe it. I almost think it's like, like a peach or a, um, I don't know, kind of some kind of uh, tangerineish kind of flavor, if you will, really interesting kind of, um, you know, non-citrus, but, you know, something that kind of range, oh, I said tangerine, kind of range of pitted fruit, if you will, that's, uh, lighter in color, like, you know, peach or something, um, and that's kind of where that, the zippiness is coming just from the farmhouse thing, but also, you are getting a little bit of citrus from the hops, and I, I do think, you know, the few times I, I've been trying it this year, I think I'm getting a lemonness to it. I almost think it's not, not necessarily citra, but I'm sure they got citra, but I mean, maybe a little bit of yeast or something like that. I don't know. I mean, we'll find out someday, some little real sun, about the uh, hop combinations and what, what the dominant hops are. Um, but it's just, you know, really nice farmhouse ale. And I, as you can see, I've got a, keep trying to remind myself, it's, it's the new uh, Flying Dog uh, Chalice Glass. It kind of looks a little bit like the actually the um, the new Belgium glasses that have been going around, and they uh, they just debuted these at the brewery for a uh, gathering about we can go now. I'm sure they'll start seeing these pop up in the marketplace. They've they've told us these are going to be their official glasses going forward. You know, I'm sure everyone has a combination of flying on glass where you've got pint glasses or the little raging bitch glasses or little tasters and everything in between. It looks like this will be kind of be the uh, the glassware for them going forward. Which maybe speaks to kind of the styles they're they're chasing, kind of more boutique and um, kind of beer styles, because that's kind of what you want to enjoy a glass like these, where you get you know a little bit more of the aromatics to be enjoyed uh, than than just a boring old pint glass. And yeah, so here's Wilderman, 2012 Wilderman.